So we want to find out about the bottlenecks and um, normally, like if this was some um, production quality, like um, industrial grade uh, code, uh, we could use uh, maybe uh, Datadog or Neuralink or StatsD or any kind of instrumentation to find out what's going on. But this is like super simple demo code, so there is nothing fancy like that in it. So I'm I'm going to use a tool called HTTPing uh, to find out about the latency of my web services. HTTPing is uh, exactly like ping, except instead of using ICMP packets, it's using HTTP requests, and it times how long it takes for the the request to complete. So here, um, in my application, I have two web services, RNG and Hasher, and they are on ports 8001 and 8002. So I'm going to do HTTPing localhost 8001. And this is telling me that uh, this web service takes 700 milliseconds to reply, which for a local web service is slow. Just to double check, I'm going to run the same thing, but on port 8002. That service takes like one millisecond to reply, which is way better. So it looks like the service on port 8001 has a problem. Uh, the service on port 8001, uh, that's RNG. So it looks like the RNG service has a problem. Um, here, uh, at that point, like, okay, what, what could be going on? So we're going to imagine that we just share that story with some coworkers near the coffee machine and they tell us, oh, okay, I know what, what, what it is. It's a problem with entropy. Um, so that the, the problem you have is that you don't have entropy, uh, enough entropy. And that's why you, your RNG service is slow. So what is this about? In almost all modern systems, um, when you need to generate random numbers, you need to, to use something special because computers are deterministic machines. So if we wrote a program to generate random numbers, then if we run that program on 10 computers, they will all give us the same deterministic result. Uh, they will all tell us uh, 53. I run the program somewhere else. It will also tell me like 53. If we want randomness, we need an external source. Um, so an external source could be, for instance, looking at the temperature, uh, but not just the temperature that outside or in the room, because that would be fairly deterministic. Like in this room, it's probably like 22 degrees Celsius, maybe. But if I look at the temperature after the decimal point, like 10 digits after the decimal point, this will be completely random and unpredictable and fluctuating all the time. Uh, just by me, like waving my arms, I'm, I'm making the temperature change uh, all over the room at, at the 10th digit after the decimal point. So that's an excellent source of randomness. And this is more or less how uh, hardware random generators work, like by with with some kind of sensor like that. Um, but when we don't have that, when we don't have like a hardware uh, random generator, we have to use something else. For instance, we could look at the time between two keystrokes on the keyboard, not in seconds, because again, that would be fairly deterministic. Not even in milliseconds, because when somebody types it, it often like at a really specific rhythm. But if we look in microseconds or nanoseconds, which is really hard for us humans to measure, but really easy for computers because they have clocks that fast, um, then that would be a good source of randomness. So what, what happens is that in the, in, in the kernel, uh, each driver that interacts with, um, some, some, some outside uh, thing, um, is going to collect some entropy, like what was the interval between two keystrokes or two um, movements of the mouse or two packets coming on the network interface. So how long did it take for this disk I/O to complete, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and then when we need actual randomness, we we collect that randomness. It's a little bit as if we had somebody throwing dice and writing the results on a little uh, notepad. And then when we need randomness, we just go to that person and tell them, hey, give me a page of random numbers, please. By the way, this is why when you generate like a, a PGP keys, like crypto keys, um, it sometimes it asks you, okay, I'm now going to generate your key. Please move the mouse when I do that. Like, why do I need to move the mouse while you generate random numbers? Well, precisely because it needs randomness. So this is a fairly reasonable sounding explanation. 
It happens to be entirely false, but we are going to pretend that it's right so that it gives us a nice excuse uh, to deploy the app on a cluster so that we can leverage the entropy from multiple computers.